So, last time I started making a game, inspired by Breath of the Wild and The Witcher 3. And everything was going quite well. Too well, in fact. But there was a slight problem. You see, despite my incredible game development skills, it turned out that developing my AAA title was a bit more difficult than I'd anticipated. Not to mention, creating good open-world games can get quite complex and overwhelming. So because I don't want to repeat what just happened, and have yet to write an achievement on my very prestigious resume, instead of watching tutorials, I decided to go back and start with something simpler. A mobile game. The idea I had was to make some sort of endless runner, with a bird that jumps over buildings. Similar to Flappbird. So I opened an Unity project and got started. The first thing I wanted to do was the generation of platforms for the bird to jump on. After a little research, I found out that you could just make the camera follow the player and spawn the obstacles as the bird moves. But I went with another approach, where the objects in the world move around the player. You wouldn't normally do this for games with a lot of assets in the background, but I figured that this was going to be a very simple game to make. For the bird I just made 3 very simple sprites, 2 for the running animation and 1 for jumping. Then I made a very simple script for the movement and slapped on a 2D box collider for the player. Finished it out with a few buildings and some clouds and, like that, we got a bird jumping over buildings. For the score system I wanted to measure the player's travel distance. So I just made a count of time since he started moving and threw in a letter to indicate the meters you've traveled. Genius. To pass the count with the score, I made it so when the player has fallen past a certain point, the number will stop increasing. By this point I realized that the look of the game wasn't very appealing, so I worked a bit more in the background of the scene. I can't show you a time lapse of me drawing this, because there's too much footage of me struggling at making Luke half decent, and my laptop was having a few issues editing it. I then made a very simple parallax script and added it to the different layers. And by adding some cool post-processing effects, we've got a neat looking background. To increase the game's difficulty, the buildings can gradually increment their speed until they reach a set limit. Yep. And so, it was time to test the first prototype. But I then noticed the first issue when playtesting the game. You could see that the frames the game was running at were very low. To fix this, I tried this thing called profiling, which basically tells you the frame the project is running at and indicates what's consuming the performance. But despite my efforts trying to narrow down the problem, I just couldn't find the solution. To be quite honest, I was lost and confused. And I couldn't help but wonder if maybe I just wasn't up to the task of figuring out the answer to all my problems. It was a post-processing. Yeah. By just disabling the fancy looking graphics I was using, the game was now running fine. It was not until a bit later on, well like, a few days later, that I realized that maybe it wasn't the post-processing causing the issues, that the depth of field was turned on at all times, and that it was fine to keep the 2D lights. So, I ended up uninstalling the package completely. <sighs> Fear not though. In spite of the game being 2D, I kept the lighting by using 3D lights, uh, still not realizing my mistake at that point. Next I worked in the save system for the game using the player prefs from Unity, and made the game over screen UI. And now that it remembers the player size score, I then wanted to create a custom font. To save some time, I just made the characters I needed for the game, converted them into a font, and then imported them into Unity. By this point you may have realized that the bird never actually moves its wings when it's falling, so, I drew two more sprites and added them into the game. I was also inspired by the jump squeeze animation in Celeste, and I made a squish effect that triggers when the bird jumps, which basically works by calling a coroutine that increments the timer up to 1, determined by how fast you want the animation to be. And while the timer is less than 1, the bird scale changes to squish it, and then it does the same to return it to its original size. To add more detail, I added some particle effects, and as a result, we've got a fancy looking bird. After a little bit more testing, I set up the shop menu for other unlockable characters. And by that, I mean other color variations of the bird, all of which can be accessed once the player has reached the required high score. Before I show you the collectible items, 
Let me tell you about one of the biggest problems I had to figure out. Because I then realized that the method I was using to quote unquote spawn the buildings wasn't working that smoothly. So, one Google search later, and we got the solution. Object pulling. You see, when I first tried adding infinite obstacles, it seemed very simple at first. Rather than spawning and destroying the buildings, because that's bad for the performance of the device, you could just reset the position of the objects once they were off the screen. The issue was that, while this works fine for the background, the same method applied on the buildings doesn't quite reflect that. The solution to this problem, however, is to create a pool with an active objects at the start of the game. So when you need one, you take it out of the pool and enable it. And when you don't need it anymore, you disable it and put it back in the pool. Thus, you can infinitely loop through these objects without breaking anything. And after all those hours of learning this, we now have an object pooling system. Um, give me a second. After some more playtesting and a few bug fixes, it actually works. By declaring a boolean to check if you can spawn a new building and then resetting it to true when the object's off the screen, this stopped it from creating new objects. And they can also change the look randomly within these two sprites. So with our new fancy pants object pooling system, we can now add other cool features like eggs. I also made a simple floating animation, added a trigger collider to it, and made some cool looking particle effects that trigger every time the player collects the egg. And when the player falls down, you can see more clearly how many eggs you collected that round alongside your travel distance and your high score. And you can also use the eggs to unlock the other birds in the shop. I'll have to think about a different purpose for the high score. Around this point in the project, it felt like there was a lot missing in this game for it to be more fun. Like, enemies? Maybe. So to solve this, I made a crow sprite and we used the same movement script as the eggs and buildings, with just a few variations. It also uses a 2D box collider for detecting when the player hits it. I've seen that you can use raycast instead, but this works for now. I was experimenting a bit more with the mechanics for the bird, and now it actually flies, and the fancy 2D lights are back again. I'm still not sure what to do with the buildings, because they feel a bit stale right now. What I'll do is experiment more with the gameplay before landing on anything. Plus, just avoiding crows gets repetitive very quickly. I also made a few different eggs, but I've all implemented this gold one, which adds far more to your total amount. Then I made a few changes to the UI, so in the main menu screen you no longer see the play and quit button. Instead, you just have to start the game. You also no longer have to press the lock button to unlock the character and then select it. The locker will just be gone. I then finally realized that I needed to change the look of the bird and make a few different ones, so I changed it by giving it a belly and adding a tail at the end, because uh, I completely missed that the first time. I also changed the flying animation and reduced it to two frames. A few different birds later, and we now have more diversity in the character selection. Finally, for the sound, I use this program called SFXR, which is cool because it fits with the Pixar style of the game. Now, I couldn't add any soundtracks because I don't really know how to compose music. I'll definitely come back to this and figure it out next time, alongside the implementation of the buildings and other neat features I want to add. But for now, thanks for watching me struggle as I try to learn how to make a mobile game. I'll try to finish this and release it by the next episode. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Later.